Hey guys, this is Thea from NetSuite Tea Life, and today we're going to be talking about the Rusty Blue Chevy painting technique. So this is the desk I'm going to be working on, and we are going to be inspired by this photo. And we're going to be working with this color. called Pacific Blue. This is one of our new blues from Wise Owl, and it's really bright and brilliant, and that's going to be what I do for my crumb coat. Whenever I talk about crumb coat, that just means I'm putting a super thin layer on here just to start introducing the colors and to give my next coat of paint a little something to bite into. So I'm going to grab my brush, and I've got my paint, and I've got a little water bottle and the reason I use this is because I I want to make it easy to put the paint on there so I may mist as I go just making sure that everything's gliding super easily I only want a very thin layer of paint something like I said just to introduce the color and to give the next coat something to really grab onto so it's nice and saturated the less paint you actually use while giving the look the less chance of crackling bumping brush strokes it just gives it a more flawless finish. Now down here, you're going to notice where my sweet little girl began painting. This was going to be her desk to paint, but she got a little bit bored with it. So it has sat here for many months, just waiting for the right thing to happen, which is going to be this rest technique. Later on, I'm going to be using uh, Joni's um, Funky Colpatina, her rust kit. Ah, see, I'm barely using any paint, and it's just incredibly brilliant. I get really excited using it. Um, her Funky Colpatina is going to be what I use to get the actual rust look. Um, you can use other rust kits. I will say though, I've used a couple of different types of products that offer that look and hers are unmatched. They react better and are more strong than any of the kits that I've ever worked with. I'm gonna get a little bit up here so that you can see. And again, not much, just a little bit. As far as prep, the only thing that I have done is I cleaned it really well with water, vinegar, and just a touch of dish soap. That's the mixture that I use. Um, you can use other chemical products, but be sure to wipe away any residue because that residue can react with your products and cause things to discolor, bubble, crackle, all kinds of things. So you wanna make sure that there's no residue left behind. After I cleaned it, I then went over it with an 80 grit sand, paint, sand block, um, and that was to just break the finish a little bit. I didn't have to do much. This finish is pretty much already shot, um, but I just wanted to do a little bit of something to make sure that there was no sheen left behind. Once the finish was broken, um, the next step was just to get some shellac. I used clear shellac in the can. I'll pop it up here so that you can see it. And by using that, I'm able to apply a few coats. It's self-leveling and it seals off everything really, really well um, so that I have no worries about um, tannin, wood oils, things of that nature coming up through the paint as I work. One of the worst things you can ever have is a finished product and the bleed coming through, turning your finished product different colors of yellow, brown, and even pink sometimes. Nobody wants to have that happen. All right, so as you can see, like I said, a very thin coat, just a little bit. It probably seems pretty dark to you, um, but I'll give you a closer look in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and be back to you in just a second. 